Good morning. Thank you for joining us in worship today. We're so glad to be able to worship live from the sanctuary today and have all of you join us from wherever you are. Uh, please stand with me right now as we hear the call to worship. This is from Romans chapter 8, verses 38 to 39. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm so glad we have a Redeemer who will never leave us or forsake us. We cannot be separated by anything in this world. Join me in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you for drawing us into worship this morning. We thank you for who you are, and we worship you this morning. Lead us and draw us closer to you through song, through scripture, and the preaching of your word. Be with Chima this morning. In your word and your name, we pray. Amen. Okay, listen, we're going to be singing, and uh, you're welcome to stand where you are, sit where you are, wherever you can uh, be comfortable and worship God.
Stand with me as I read this scripture. It's in Psalms 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise to Lord. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasing and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warriors. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. Good morning, church. There's a couple announcements before we continue in our, our time of worship this morning. Uh, our pastoral search is still coming along. Um, if you haven't got a survey yet and filled it out, um, please let us know. We can get you a survey. Uh, we can email it to you, the link to that, or we can give you a physical hard copy. Um, so you don't have to be a member of the church. You can just be a regular attender. Uh, we need your input on how we can best find the next shepherd of our flock. So um, be mindful that the, the due date for um, the surveys is February 10th. So um, we're coming up very closely. So reach out if you haven't filled out a survey yet. Um, also, alabaster offering, um, we're going to be collecting that uh, through the month of February. Um, so if you have um, been saving up in your uh, alabaster boxes, um, keep collecting, and um, you can either bring it to the church and, and bring it to the church office, um, or you can go online. I've, I've seen a lot of uh, people giving online, which is a great thing. Um, so if you want to give online, um, there's a drop-down box. You click on that. And then you can select the alabaster offering. Um, so um, just continue to um, go to the link or to, to drop it off um, at the church. Um, collecting the offering helps continue to build churches around the world and to further God's kingdom. 
Um, we are also updating the prayer train in the next uh, couple of weeks. This is another vital ministry in our church. Um, there are two ways that you can participate in the prayer train. Uh, you can text um, or you can, there's a phone chain. So send a message to, to Julia or call the church office and talk with Ms. Raquel um, if you want to be committed to this, this prayer chain. Uh, we're looking for a one-year commitment. So regardless if you participated in the past before, um, please just let Ms. Raquel or Julia know if you want to participate in this coming up year. Um, we are closing in very quickly on the, the Lenten season. Um, Ash Wednesday is February 17th. Um, and we have the, our devotionals for the Lenten season called Sacred Invitation. Um, it's provided by the Foundry, our denomination's publishing house. Uh, it costs $5, and I think it's just going to be a great time to mark time as we can um, journey to the cross and journey to um, our hope in Jesus. So if you want a copy of that, it's $5, and you can come to any one of the staff people, me, Julia, or Reverend Delgado. Um, good news. Um, in the, over the next two weeks, we will be live streaming the service, but on February 21st, that's when we'll start to allow um, you to come back into the building and we can worship together in person. So we'll be streaming online. It's just a couple of handful of people, the, the worship team, the tech, pe- uh, tech team, and then the preacher here um, to, um, this week and next week. Um, but the, uh, the 21st, we'll be having in person. And if you want to be in person, make sure that uh, you contact Mr. Carroll. This is the only way that we're doing signups now is if you call the church office um, and let Mr. Carroll know that you uh, want to be here in person. Um, we're, we're capping it out at 20 people, um, so make sure that you call her either on Thursday or Friday um, so that you can let her know that you want to be a part of the worship service that coming up week. Um, with the year continuing on, our, our, our Bible studies and small groups um, are continuing to, to start back up again. Um, Reverend Delgado's Portuguese Bible study meets here in the sanctuary, and they'll start back up on the 24th uh, at 7 o'clock. So if you want to reach out to Reverend Delgado to let him know that you're going to be a part and that you'll be back on the 24th, um, let, him, let him know. And then um, Pastor Julia is going to be uh, doing a Lenten season um, devotional small group on Zoom on Tuesday evenings at 7 so if you want to be a part of that, um, let her know. And that'll start February 23rd. And again, to just thank you for your, your faithfulness and your, your giving online, your dropping off at the office. Um, it's continuing to, to bless our ministries and um, to just continue to worship um, in your relationship with God. So as we continue in this, this time of worship, um, I ask you to, to, to find yourself a space um, to be able to, to come into a time of prayer. Um, I know we'd love to be able to gather around the altar and to bring our needs and to bring our request um, to the Lord. Um, but thankfully that we can just go to him in prayer wherever we're at. So whether um, you're in front of your, your TVs or your computer screens, you can still come to the Heavenly Father and he still hears you. So find a posture, find a place that best suits you to, to worship and, to, and get into an attitude of prayer as we uh, lead into our next song. Who are thirsty? Oh, who are we? Come to the fountain. Dip your heart in the stream of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of His mercy. Sing, 
Father, as I listen to the words um, of this song, I pray, Lord, that despite where all of our people are at, Father, that you would come, that you would dwell among us, Lord. The fact that we're in this building doesn't make it special than not being in the building or being at home, Lord. Your presence is all around us. We ask that you come and fill our space. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for who you are and what you've done, not just in my life, but in your people's life, Lord. I'm sure we can count um, the blessings and uh, the abundance of what you're doing in and through our lives, Lord. So I thank you for who you are and what you're doing in our life, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you can just continue to be with our people, Lord. Lord, I know, I understand the struggle of what it means not to be in this building, Lord, to not being able to worship like we used to worship in the past, Lord. We're getting tired. We're getting weary, Lord. I pray that you'll give us strength. I pray that you'll give us um, just a sense of your presence when we go through that difficult time, Lord. I pray that you will um, send people alongside each other, Lord, to, to build them up, to encourage them, to let them know that they're loved, and that they're being thought of this week, Lord. Father, I'm thinking about this, just the continual um, fear and just unknown of this virus, Lord. Um, it, it's, it's almost a year that we, we've been in this, this COVID world. And uh, Father, I, I just pray that we just continue to be able to, to push through, that we'll continue to endure, Lord, um, we're, we're so thankful that um, these scientists and, and doctors are working so hard and diligently, Lord, on, on getting this vaccine for, for this, this virus, Lord. And so I pray that um, this will help move us in the right direction as we can continue to, um, as we can gather back together, Lord, and, and to, to be able to worship together, Lord. But understanding that because we're not doesn't mean we're still not um, in the church, Lord, because we are the church, Lord. We are your people. And so I pray, Lord, that um, you'll just continue to, to, to hold us together and to rely on your strength, Lord. I pray that this continued um, blessings and, and, and just wisdom and discernment for our leaders of our country, Lord, from the, from the nationwide level, Lord, all the way down to our local level, Father. 
continue to give them um, the type of wisdom and discernment in order to, to best uh, fit, that's best fit for our people, Lord, that's keeping us safe and that's keeping us, um, keeping us going, Lord. Allow us to have the similar kind of leadership and wisdom, Lord, just within the local church, Lord, that we can continue to do what's best for our people, the people that we love so much, Father. Continue to be with the families, Lord, that have been affected by COVID in terms of actually being um, diagnosed with it and, and confirmed with it, Lord. Allow them to have strength. Allow them to recover quickly, Lord. Allow them to, to keep their distance and to, to rest, Lord, um, to be at the the family that's not affected by it, Lord, and I know it kind of slows down life for them as well, Lord. Continue to give them patience and peace within that time too, Lord. Continue to be with the families who um, have not been able to work because of it, Father, that um, you'll just continue to, to bless them, Lord, that you'll continue to provide for them, Father, uh, in, in just how you do, Lord, and how you provide for your people, Father. Do we ask that you just continue to be with um, our loved ones, Lord, the ones that we care for so much, Father. We know that there are many different, many different things that we, we, we go through in life, Lord, just to everyday ups and downs, Lord, um, the financial um, crisis that we go through on, on time to time, Lord, the, the physical um, touches that we need this morning, Lord. I pray that you'll be with your people, that you'll just let us know that you're with us, that you're wrapping your, your loving arms around us, Father. Father, I don't know when all this is going to come to an end, Lord, but I know that you're a God who's always there for us, Lord, that you'll never leave us, that you'll never forsake us. And so, Father, as we continue in our time of worship this morning, I pray, Lord, that you'll just use me, that um, you'll bless my words, Lord, that they'll be your words and not mine, Father, um, and that we can be reminded of your great love, of your great power, and of your great um, might, Lord. So continue with us as we, as we continue in this time together, Lord. Open our hearts, open our minds, um, and just let us know that you're with us in this presence, Lord. We ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. So as the worship team is transitioning down, um, I hope that y'all are all uh, cozy and warm where you're at um, in front of your TV screens and um, computers uh, as the snow comes down. Um, it's going to be a snowy Sunday indeed. Um, that's okay. So my mom was and still is obsessed with pictures. Um, she is always taking pictures. Uh, she was constantly buying those disposable plastic cameras, you know, those, those old cameras. And, and, and once she took all those pictures, you, you had to go get them developed. You had to take them out and get them developed. Um, and eventually, she got one of those Polaroid cameras where you just push the button and it spits out the picture. And, you know, you had to shake it, even though you didn't really have to shake it, apparently. It is what we thought it would come out quicker if, you, if we shook it. Um, and so she, she loved taking pictures. Was she a photographer? Not at all. <laughs> By no means was she um, an expert um, picture taker. Um, I'm sorry, Mom, but you, you wasn't that good. Um, but the majority of the pictures were OK. Um, but there, there were some that were blurring. But I, I reflect back, and I'm very thankful that she took pictures and that she had those, those moments. But if you asked me at the time, it was super embarrassing, you know? Uh, whether it was a, a school event or a, a church event, she was always there with her camera. And she had like, get your friends together, gather around, gather around. I'm like, mom, stop, you're embarrassing me. Um, like her asking to take a picture would bring my level of cool down or my popularity down for asking for a photo. Um, and so again, she would get all the pictures developed and then she'd put them in a photo album. Um, and then once she got the photo album, she'd put them on the shelf. Um, but she never scrapbooked, which, which I'm thankful for. She didn't reach that level of, of crazy in terms of scrapbooking. But 
I'm thankful for those memories that um, she captured, the many Christmases, birthdays, church events, graduations. Um, pictures are perfect ways to kind of encapsulate time and these memories that we, that we hold so dear. There'd be countless times I'd go back and flip through those, those photo albums and I'd look at those embarrassing pictures that I thought she was taking. And, I, and I'm just thankful to be able to get back into that time for just a little bit. And um, nowadays, that, that kind of makes me feel like I'm a little old saying nowadays. Uh, I, I know how Mr. Jim feels sometimes. <laughs> but, but nowadays, if I want to reflect or if we want to reflect on our memories, um, we pull out our phones, right? We kind of scroll through the pictures on our phones or we go to social media and kind of scroll through the pictures and videos we have on there. And um, on Facebook, there's actually, um, a, uh, it kind of shows you the pictures and, and posts and videos that you shared over the years um, that you posted on Facebook. And the feature is kind of rightly named Memories. And so in the morning, the first thing at the top of my timeline uh, is the picture or a, a video that I posted maybe uh, a year ago, five years ago, or 10 years ago. And one of the recent memories that popped up on, on my timelines and in the memories feed um, was of Abraham. And he wasn't even one year old yet. And he was at his babysitter's house, um, at the babysitter at the time. So she sent us a video. And Abraham had this little toy phone. And he kind of held it up to his ear. And he's like, Hello? And then he kind of stared at it a little bit, kind of contemplating life, I think. He puts it back up. Hello? And he's like, <laughs> and he kind of like giggles at the end. And it's, it's a video that I treasure so much. Um, and I put a little caption as I, as I reposted it. And it said, my little man is growing up too fast with a little sad face and crying emoji. Memories, right? Memories. It's a great way to reflect back on life. And we, we have all those pictures on the wall. We have pictures in our albums on the shelf. Um, just times that we just can reflect back and remember those precious moments in life. And so this morning's text opens with a question for Israel to remember, to reflect on its memory. As I was preparing and studying, I came across the assumption that that lies at the core of Israel's testimony. And this assumption is that faith begins with memory. This isn't the same kind of memory we were just talking about. Um, It's the first definition, which is the faculty by which the mind stores and remembers information. The memory I was talking about before is just remembering the past, remembering something from the past. And so this assumption is that Israel's faith begins with memory. And when that memory fails, the faith of the community is threatened. We will see that there are many things that can threaten the faithful memory of the community. During this time, the people of God had been in exile for more or most of their life right now. And their memory of something that they once knew so very quickly has beginning to fade and been forgotten. So we'll see that the prophet is asking a question, hoping that Israel will remember what they have long forgotten. So if you have your Bibles or your Bible or your devices, turn with me to the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, and we'll be reading verses 21 to 31. (coughs) So if you found your place, please stand with me as we read the word of the Lord. Isaiah 40, 21 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy, and he stretches out He stretches them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground, than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? 
To who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and might, strength, no one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow weary or or tired. In his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So as I mentioned before, the people of God are in the midst of their exile. They disobeyed God, and they wasn't worshiping him as the one and only God. So four nations were able to capture them and to destroy their promised land, to destroy their temple. This left the Israelites scattered, and many were taken back into captivity in the Babylonian nation. This exile will go on for 70 years. Now the prophet is is coming back to them towards the end of their time in exile to tell them that it is time to journey back home. It's time to journey back to the promised land, to Jerusalem. Those years of suffering and exile have been more than enough to atone for their sins. The time has come for them, with the Lord's help, to set out on their return journey from Babylon to Jerusalem. However, it seems like the people have forgotten or lost hope of ever returning back to their homeland. Through the years in exile, doubt began to arise. Doubt about Yahweh's attention to Israel's future and the control in which his power and his direct his direction for that future is, is threatening their constitution of their community. They felt as if God had abandoned them, had forgotten them. There are many things that can threaten Israel's faith, as I mentioned before. One of those threats were the political and social threats of the time. The Babylonian nation, they were strong, and pressure to accept their culture was no doubt immense. The pressure to fall in line, fit in, were were most likely there. The Babylonian people had their cultures and their own gods. And as Israel continued in their exile, there's no doubt that the Babylonian beliefs and practices began to rub off on God's people. One of the greatest fears that a lot of the Israelite parents had for their children was that they'd be lost to the surroundings. I think that's kind of fitting for our our parents today, that our children would be lost to the surroundings of the culture, that it would lure them away. And it seems that some of their fears had become a reality, and that once they were hoping that once God delivered them from their exile, um, that their children um, would not want to stay. But it seems like that's the case. And so that threatened their faith, the notion that they would stay in the Babylonian nation. This kind of leads to, a, to another threat, the ease and comfort which they are living in right now. So at first, in the beginning of the exile, living in this foreign land was difficult. It was trying. But eventually, over time, they began to settle down. They may have even got one of, one of those nice high-paying jobs within the nation. They began to have security. The new rulers and the people of Persia who just moved in, um, they don't seem to be that big of a problem. They don't seem too bad. So, so why should we leave? If we have this comfort, this security, this, um, they're not really mean to us, so, so why should we leave? They had gotten comfortable. If they leave, then there's a possibility of uncertainty of their safety and the provisions to be, that will be provided for. The Babylonians were there before, now the Persians that are, that are there now are providing for them. 
the people of Israel thought God had abandoned them. That's what it felt like. We see that in verse 27 when it says, Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. It's because they thought God had abandoned them. So they came to the conclusion that the gods of Babylon could possibly be stronger than their God, or maybe God really didn't exist at all. So they had concluded that they are simply disregarded by the one who sits enthroned above the heavenly circle. Because if God was, had not regarded them, then who was going to keep them safe? Who was going to keep them safe on their journey back home? Who was going to ensure that the temple is going to get rebuilt? They have everything they need right here where they are. So why leave? So each one of these threats we just uh, we see that we talked about is a threat to Israel's faith. But it's not the biggest one. The biggest threat to their faith was their memory. The people of Israel had forgotten what they once knew so very clearly. This memory wasn't like us opening up our photo albums and remembering the the vacation that we took last year or the, the graduation party that our kids experienced a few years ago. This was the memory of what God had done for his people, remembering the oral traditions Many of Israel, Israelites knew only exile. They had spent most or all of their life in exile. Isaiah is saying that you have forgotten the information about who you are and who you belong to. Yes, the Babylonian nation may seem strong and intimidating, but Israel's faithfulness or forgetfulness represents the real threat to their community of faith. This leads Isaiah to point this out in the opening verses of our text. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Does, has it not been told to you from the beginning? The people of Israel do not have this general knowledge or understanding of religion. They have a very particular account of how the world was made, of how God chose a people, of who God was, and who God is. This is nothing casual or serendipitous about this knowledge that that Israel had. And it's precisely the possession and the good stewardship of this knowledge of what it means for Israel to be God's elect people in the first place due to the destruction and the suffering that they have experienced and they are no doubt absorbed in. They have forgotten who God is and what he can do. Isaiah details and reminds them exactly who God is. He is the one who who created and can, can control the nations as a part of creation. He calls them to look up to the heavens. Who brings out the stars? Who knows them by name? Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. This great reminder, this great example can be used as an example of God creating us and knowing our names. Human development experts have identified how important receiving recognition is to a healthy psyche. Not just the recognition for outstanding achievements, which should be celebrated and is very important, but the simple uh, recognition of one's very existence. We know the challenges and difficulties a child can have if they are ignored or neglected. They'll have trouble as adults making meaningful connections because they did not receive the sufficient recognition of just their personhood as a kid. How awesome, how grand, how wonderful is God that he knows even the smallest forgotten child by name. The God who is described as enthroned above the circle of heaven, from which his perspective sees us as grasshoppers, knows our name. God who is all-powerful, almighty, we who are powerless and weak, he calls us out by name without missing one. God is saying, who can compare to me? Who is my equal? 
these kings that you're putting more faith in than me? God is saying that these nations and rulers are like stubble or like chaff before my divine power. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground that I will blow on them and they will wither. I will blow them away. The power and might that these nations and rulers have are just temporary. We see that the Persians had just taken over Babylon when Isaiah is is urging them to go back home. They don't compare to the power of the one who created the universe itself, who hung the stars in the sky and knows them by name. He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten his people. This crisis of the Babylonian exile has caused the people to forget their own story. The story of God's attentiveness and dependability. The story of God's love for Israel. Because they have forgotten, they are questioning the presence and power of their God. My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by him. And God is saying, you know who I am. You know the power that I have. I am the God that never grows weary or tired. I am the God of everlasting strength and power. Not like your nations, not like your rulers. They grow weary. They grow tired. They will faint. But not the Lord. He never grows tired or weary. In fact, he offers strength and power to the weak and to the weary and to the youth. Those of you know, we have a a hyperactive four-year-old, and uh, it's kind of hard to fathom that he ever grows tired or weary. He's like the Energizer Bunny. He just keeps going and going and going and and going. However, it was when he had to continue quarantine after Julie and I had COVID that I can tell he began to grow tired and weary of being home. He was tired of being home with mommy and daddy, and we were tired of him being home as well. Um, But we just kept telling him, be strong. Soon, this will be over. You can go back to school with your friends. Does he understand what's going on? No, he doesn't understand what's happening. Kind of like a lot of us, when tough times happen, we don't know why this is happening or or why this is going on. And just like God's people, It's tough to maintain hope sometimes. But if we depend on God and wait and trust in our story, then we'll be able to receive the power and strength, the ability to meet these goals. And not just to meet these goals and challenges, but to face them and to rise above them. We know that despite Israel's wariness, that God's people trusted him and put their hope in him. And he gave them strength that they needed to return back to their homeland and to rebuild their temple. It didn't happen right away. They had to be patient. They had to wait. No doubt they grew tired and weary. But God helped them remember the memories of their story. He gave them the power to run and not grow weary, to walk and not faint. I could say that Similar to the people, the Hebrew people, um, we're living in a time of exile, in a sense. We are are living in a time where our morals, our beliefs, our values don't match up to the morals, values, and beliefs of our world today. And there are many times when some of those threats that we discuss today kind of threaten our faith as well. Political, social, and cultural things of our day threaten our faith. We found ourselves hanging on the words of of leaders, of politicians and celebrities, instead of the word of God that he has given us. We found ourselves relying on the strength and power of these world leaders instead of the mighty strength of God. We get caught up in the the, the, discomfort and this ease of life that we have forgotten and gotten out of the rhythms of our faith. We think that, well, I mean, since we can't gather together, like, what are we supposed to do? even though we have groups that meet on Zoom and meet online. I feel we've gotten comfortable with what we used to do and we won't try the difficult. We have become 
comfortable with the ease in which we could gather before and be together. And as soon as that's taken away, our faith is threatened because times are difficult and it isn't like it used to be. And I think just like the Hebrew people, our memories is our biggest faith, our biggest threat to our faith. I think we forget who God is and what he has done for us in the past. We can consider that this COVID season another exile within our exile that we're already in. We long for COVID to be over. We long to get rid of these masks. We long to get back to gathering together as a people. We are growing tired and weary of this COVID life. We are just becoming tired and weary in general, if we really think about it. God is telling us that we have the strength to get through this time of exile, to get through this pandemic, but it's not going to be easy, and we're going to grow tired and weary. But we have to remember that we know who God is and what he can do. We know his strength, his power, his might goes well beyond our abilities. We can all have what God has to offer if we wait and trust in the Lord. He says, but to those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. People, we can make it through this exile. People of God, we can make it through life's difficulties. Not through our strength. Not through pastor's strength but through the strength of our Heavenly Father. The only thing that he asks is of us is to have faith and to be patient. Eventually, we'll make it back and we'll gather together again. And I know we're all growing tired of being apart, but let's remember we have hope and we have a God that will renew our strength. But I know a lot of you are struggling this morning. I struggle this morning. Know that God is offering to renew your strength. He doesn't want you tired. He doesn't want you weary. He wants you to trust the almighty, all-powerful strength of your Heavenly Father. The type of strength that carries you on eagle's wings. The type of strength that allows you to run and not grow weary. To walk and not faint. Trust and have hope this morning. Find your strength in the Lord.
there's a shelter like no other. Your name. Let the nations sing it louder. We're so thankful for your name. We're so thankful for your power. Father, I pray, Lord, uh, that as we go through life, as we go through um, the tough times, the difficult times, Lord, that we don't forget who we are and what we know. That you're a God of absolute love, mercy, and grace. And that when we do get tired, that when we do get weary, that you'll give us strength, that you'll give us power to run and not grow weary, to walk and not faint, to allow us to soar on wings like eagles. Father, I ask that if anyone needs that power this morning, that they'll just ask, and that they'll put their faith and trust and hope in you to know that you'll give them that power this morning. Continue to walk with us, Lord. Continue to guide us. We ask this in your precious and holy name. So receive this benediction as we go out and live that strength this morning. Father, use us, guide us, give us your strength and power when we find ourselves growing weak and weary. Allow us to soar on wings like eagles because we know who you are and what you can do in our life. Give us that strength this morning and use us to do amazing and mighty things in your name. You're dismissed. Shelter.